Hello and welcome to another Explorer game. The video today is taking a look at an incredibly janky deck that's looking to mill the opponent out with her own Giruda Doom of Depths. This is also our companion, so in order to run it as companion, our deck can only contain cards with even mana values. So as you can see, we've got lots of two drops to accelerate our mana, then a lot of four mana clone effects to copy our Giruda, and that's going to be very important to our game plan. And then we also have a few Girudas in the main deck, so we can potentially draw the Giruda naturally, so we can skip the step of paying three mana to move Giruda from the companion zone to our hand. Otherwise, that's an extra three mana we need to spend to gain access to our key combo piece and then at the 6-6 when it enters the battlefield we'll mill each player for four and then we get to put a creature card with an even mana value from among the milled cards onto the battlefield under our control so hopefully if we mill ourselves with Giruda we'll be able to hit at least one of our clone effects or another Giruda which will result in another Giruda trigger on the stack and then ideally we also hit a spark double instead of another clone effect so we can actually keep a non-legendary version of Giruda on the battlefield so we can keep making more and more Girudas otherwise we'll just keep triggering Giruda in the hopes of eventually hitting a spark double or just to completely mill the opponent out with all these Giruda triggers because of course every time we're also milling the opponent by four and if we keep going then we'll end up with both players at zero cars in library but the opponent takes their draw step first for the turn so they'll end up decking before we do so that's our game plan in a nutshell try to win the game by copying Giruda over and over until we mill the opponent out and in order to get there, we do need some acceleration because we're trying to cast a six mana creature as well as sometimes having to pay the companion cost. So at two mana, there's a full set of Paradise Root, 2 1 with Hexproof as long as it's untapped and makes one mana of any color. So this is a pretty safe investment usually, as we can keep it untapped for as long as possible and then it can make the mana to eventually cast our Giruda. Can also potentially copy our Paradise Root with one of our many clone effects because, of course, a lot of our opening hands will be pretty clunky with a lot of these four mana clone effects in hand and then. Sometimes you just want to copy your Paradise Druid to have enough mana to cast Giruda on the following turn. And then besides Paradise Root, we also have two copies of the Scram Gorger. Can also make one mana of any color. Doesn't have that built-in protection, but at three toughness, it's usually safe. And then it can also act as a graveyard hate in a pinch. So it can be quite useful when facing, let's say, a Grease Fang combo deck. And then we also have some non-creature ramp with Wolf Willow Haven. So the advantage here is that it's not as easy to interact with as, let's say, a Scram Gorger. The downside is that we cannot copy our Haven with our traditional clone effect, but we do also have four copies of Clever Impersonator, which enters the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. So that can also include our Wolf Willow Haven. So that can also be a relevant interaction. And then we also have four copies of Gross Spiral to draw a card and put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield. So this has the advantage of ramping us without exposing a creature to removal, but there's a downside of sometimes not hitting two lands and then it doesn't actually ramp us. And of course we cannot copy it with our various four mana clone effects, which we can with Scram Gorger and Paradise Root, and sometimes Wolf Willow Haven. 
So ideally, let's say we have our Paradise Root and Gross Parallel in hand, and we've got a couple of lands as well. Then a turn two will usually play a Paradise Root, and then a turn three we can cast Gross Parallel, and because the land enters untapped that we get to play that turn, we'll still have enough mana to put Giruda from the Companion Zone into our hand, and then on turn four, if we hit our land drop, we'll have six mana left, assuming Paradise Root survives, and then we can cast Giruda and potentially even win the game on that same turn. Now, of course, we do need a lot of clone effects to have that consistency of continuously copying our own Giruda, and that's why we have four copies of Mirror Hall Mimic, can also be disturbed out of the graveyard. We've got Spark Double, this is the most important one, since it makes our Giruda non-legendary, so we can potentially keep a Giruda on the battlefield, and then if we don't fully combo off, we can potentially just win the game by attacking with 6-6 six, six, and 7-7 seven, seven Girudas, and once we have a single non-legendary Giruda on the battlefield, we can continuously copy it with our other clone effect, so we don't need to always hit spark double in order to copy Giruda and keep it on the battlefield. Then the impersonator, as we mentioned, can also copy other non-creature permanents like Wolf of Haven. Then Undercover Operative has the advantage of coming into play with a shield counter, so that can protect our creature from removal. Vizier, similar to the Mirror Hall Mimic, can also provide more value out of the graveyard for 5 mana, and Altered Ego is uncounterable and can also provide extra plus 1 plus 1 counters if we can sink extra mana into it. And then of course we also have 3 copies of Giruda, so we can potentially just skip the step of putting Giruda in hand from the Companion Zone and cast it for 6 mana, which can also potentially save us an extra turn and surprise the opponent with a Giruda out of nowhere. And then our mana base has 24 lands total, could try to run more to have a more consistent growth spiral, but then we also end up cutting into the clone numbers, and the more we have, the more consistent our Giruda will be once we actually cast it, and that's our main game plan. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. This portion of the video is brought to you by Cook and Becker and their officially licensed Magic the Gathering art print collection. Their pieces include Kiora the Crashing Wave by Scott Fisher, Nissa of Shadowed Bows by Dave Raposa, Buzzery Cat by Toshiaki Takayama, Kalia of the Vast by Scott Fisher, and Bitter Blossom by Rebecca Gay. There will be two variants available for each one, the standard digital print and the deluxe screen print, which can come in different sizes. Each print will also come with a certificate of authenticity, and I love what they've done with the mana symbols on those. Every order of a premium print has a 1 in 10 chance of receiving an exclusive not-for-sale print of Black Lotus by Christopher Rush. This is a limited edition print run, so get yours while they're still available, and check out their website using the link in the video description, and any purchases will help support the channel, so that's always very much appreciated. And now back to the gameplay. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not that great. Two lands, one ramp card. This is better. Turn to Paradise Root, turn three, clone it, and uh, Personator can go. Try to keep Spark Double in hand if possible, so we can copy Giruda and keep the uh, non legendary version in play as well. Opponent Blue Reds did not fire off anything end of turn there. So. I'm hesitant to tap my Paradise Root here, so I'm gonna wait, just put Giruda in hand. Next turn copy it, and then go for Giruda. Opponent Impulses, so might be a blue-red creativity deck, which is known to pack some counter spells. So they can counter Giruda, we're gonna be sad. Fable. Could bounce the token, but let's just play Vizier. Copy Paradise Druid. Pass a turn. Could wait to cast Giruda until we have uh, four leftover mana to pay for Make Disappear. But also don't want to give the opponent infinite time to set up their own combo. A World Spine Worm costs 11 mana, I believe, so we wouldn't be able to grab it with Giruda, which is a shame because it means it also gets shuffled back into the opponent's library, so it's going to make it harder for us to mill them out. But once we mill Xenagos, the threats of an opposing combo diminishes severely. Alright, now that we drew another Giruda, I'm okay with just casting one right now. Let's 
going to be a big score in response, so no make disappear yet, but they could of course have another one in hand. Nope, Giruda resolves. And clone with operative to get that shield counter. Hope to hit a spark double early. Another operative. See so if we can mill some of the opponent's combo pieces, that can also win us the game. Impersonator, copy Giruda, keep shield counter. And I'll go for Impersonator. And yeah, there we see World Spine Worm. I guess 11 mana, so it's oddly costed, so can't grab it. Another Giruda. And finally found a Spark Double, so we get to keep both Girudas now. Copy the non-legendary one, so now we get to keep all of them in play. Another Spark Double. Didn't think we've milled Xenagos yet. Five cards remaining. Copy again. World Spine will get shuffled back. So that's one way for them to potentially uh, stay alive here. So let's see. We have six cards left, the opponent has two. So if I mill four more, our opponent will draw World Spine for the turn. They won't have a Xenagos, which we just milled, so we don't have to fear the combo anymore. So what we do have to fear is our opponent having like a Prismari command to force us to draw and then deck before they do. So I think we don't want to copy Giruda anymore. And instead just uh, copy a Shaman. Because yeah, the World Spine War makes it a little bit tricky to mill them out. And I guess hit for two. We've got six cards remaining, opponent's got three, including World Spine Worm and no Xenagos. So it's gonna be tough for them to win the game. And our opponent explodes, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand is pretty bad. Take Mulligan, this is better. Three ram creatures, two lands, so wouldn't mind finding another land. And then... Do I bottom a mana creature or a clone effect? Think I hang on to Spark Double to maybe copy a Giruda that's in play. Opponent also blue green, although I doubt it's going to be a mirror match. Turn one ladder elves. Okay, so play Paradise Druid. Hope to draw land so we can double spell next turn. A matter reshaper, so an Eldrazi deck. Does mean they could have Thought Not Seer, which is hand disruption. So that could uh, potentially snipe a Giruda before we can cast it. Good to keep in mind. So not the best start so far. Only two lanes. A Grotto lets them scry. And there's a Thought Not Seer. Our hand is pretty redundant, but likely to take a Scrap Gorger here, I would say. And then next turn we can copy a Paradise Druid. So I'm not sure what the blue is for. Green for Mana Elves makes sense. But there's not too many amazing blue Eldrazi on Arena. So if that's for counter spells, we could be in trouble. We top deck Giruda. That's decent. So probably fine to play Scrap Gorger now. Keep Paradise Druid untapped. And then, uh, yeah, with a land next turn we could cast Giruda. Blast Zone, if they get it to 2, would also be pretty annoying. Forsaken Monuments, okay. Opponent is tapped out, although we are taking a significant hit. Down to 6. Found a land, cast Giruda from hand, and hope to combo off. 
see black mana in there too. So start with operative, get that shield counter at least. And a spark doubles excellent, so now we can actually go wide with Giruda. Vizier, copy our non-legendary Giruda. And now we're going off, could even thought not the opponent for what it's worth. But uh this should be good enough. I guess if her opponent can cast an Ugin, that would be bad. So if I find another Thought Knot from the opponent, I might take it instead of going even further here. Because her opponent will have 8 mana next turn to cast it. I guess I could just copy a Thought Knot right now. Because yeah, we seem to have enough in play where we can just win the game by attacking with our Gerudas. And we can keep going with Spark Double next turn. But if we miss and our opponent cast Ugin, we just lose the game. So let's have a look. No Ugin, but a Karn, so we gotta sweat their next top deck. No Ugins, please. We did mill a fair amount as well, three, so unless they have four copies and drew the fourth one, we should be fine. Getting Blast Zone to six mana is gonna take them a while. Plenty of Girudas with shield counters that can block. Opponent is attacking, so if I can take 5 from Matter Reshaper without triggering it, we don't give them another draw towards Ugin. But I can block Thought Knots here just fine. So I could, um, yeah, just take 5, go to 1. I think that's without too much risk. So we get to draw a card. 25 cards remaining versus the opponent's 24. Take a blast zone or fire it off, killing Lanor Elves, that's not gonna do it. And now the coast is clear for an all-out attack. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Two ramp cards, would like an extra land or two, but can always try to copy our Paradise Druids with Operative perhaps. And then Spark Double could be a way to re-enable the combo if uh, we don't get there with the first Giruda. Facing a red-black. Not gonna go for Grow Spiral when we don't have another land in hand. Would be pretty bad if we miss. Opponent on Grixis. Thought sees we don't care about too much since we have a very redundant hand. Probably see them take Grow Spiral. Operative would be the best card to take, I think since the shield counter is going to be relevant. Their opponent goes for Gross Spiral. So yeah, no untapped land to play operative. I could put Giruda in hand, but then Paradise Road is likely to die. So I think we just have to pass it back. So we've got a very clunky hand. Has not developed very well so far. And another Thought Seize, doesn't matter. Now they might take operative or Spark Double. Well, at least our opponent's not applying any meaningful pressure here. Another spark double the draw. Well, if they cast eight more thought seizes, we win the game. Corpse Appraiser is next. So now they've got a 3-3 to apply a bit of pressure. Can we draw a non-clone effect, please? A land will do. So don't expect my Paradise Root to survive, but... At least we've got another one. It'll push Paradise Druid down. Next turn by Giruda. I'm glad they're not waiting to cast a Thought Seize until after we put Giruda in hand. And Spark doubles the draw. So I could attempt to copy Paradise Root, since it does have that shield counter, so at least it's gonna survive one removal spell. I think that's reasonable. Next turn by Giruda. Opponent just cycling a Xander's Lounge. Best case scenario, we have enough mana to put Giruda in hand and cast it in the same turn, but not sure how likely that is to happen. Another Corpse Appraiser. Now, of course, with Corpse Appraiser, our opponent knows what they're looking for, because they know that our game plan's pretty straightforward. 
So counter spells, more discard. And our opponent's got a pretty fast clock as well. Okay, so if I copy Paradise Druid next turn, let's say I draw land, I would have 8 mana total, not enough to put your root in hand and cast it. So I think that means I need to just put your root in hand and then cross my fingers that I get to untap with it. There's also the threat of a counter spell, but we've already seen triple thought seize, so I hope there's not a fourth one. Could also see instant speed removal on Jiruda before we get to copy anything. So that's a concern. Take 9 down to 5. And Shieldred's next. Okay, opponent does appear to be tapped out. So for 1 mana, nothing I really need to worry about. I can play Jiruda. I don't think it matters whether I shock myself, because if this doesn't work, we're just dead. So start with Operative to get that counter. Could also copy Shielded at some point, but yeah, hopefully we can just keep comboing until we mill our opponent out. So finding a Spark Double would be great. Archfiend's interesting, so I guess our opponent might be playing the copy Archfiend deck. Either way, keep going. And yeah, there we see the Metamorphic Alteration. So our opponent has 23 cards remaining, still a long way to go. Alright, Altered Ego keeps our hopes alive. And we also milled a Mimic. Operative, try again. So our opponent's got 15 cards remaining. Another operative. Seven cards left and no more Giruda, sadly. So yeah, now we're just dead on board, I think. Got pretty close, seven cards remaining. Never found our spark double to keep our Giruda on the battlefield. But considering how awful the uh, start of this game was, I'm surprised we actually got to successfully go off. Even if not all the way. So our opponent just has to turn the team sideways, and that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a very nice hand. Got a couple options on how to sequence. Turn to Paradise Druid, turn three, copy it with Operative as one, although now with Double Druid, that seems the more straightforward play. If we didn't have Giruda in hand, we could also go Grow Spiral and then still have three mana left for another Giruda. And we could still go for it if we want to play around Hand Disruption, but then it does mean tapping Paradise Druid and potentially losing it to Spot Removal. So let's just play another Paradise Druid and then uh, pass it back. I suppose even better would have been a um, Grow Spiral main phase, and then we don't have to tap our Paradise Druids. Atarkos Command, end of turn, so our opponent's a red-green aggro deck. And Anger of the Gods, that's a pretty big setback. Not a card I would usually see paired with Atarkos Command, but... Uh, Gets the job done here. So we'll have to wait another turn on Jiruda. Scrap Gorger, put Jiruda in hand, I suppose. Cultivate is next. Alright, so now the coast is clear for Jiruda Doom of Depths. Also have a look at the opponent's deck here. So they're a primal amulet calamity deck. And uh, no spark double. C 
seeing multiple clone effects in one mill makes me kind of nervous because that's going to make it less likely that we can consistently keep hitting our clone effects. But a spark double now is excellent. And it doesn't look like our opponent's deck deals with 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven creatures very well. Burnout House is uh, 5 damage. So yeah, we can keep going. Got another Spark Double. 15 cards remaining. Seven cards left. Now three each. And looks like we'll get to mill them out completely. So both players have empty libraries, but... Uh, opponent gets to draw first. Can also double check if they have any cards in graveyard that could be relevant, but don't think so. Otherwise, Crab Gorger could attack and exile them or just tap. And there we have it. Get to see the new mill animation. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is keepable. We've got a ramp card, three lands, and a Geruda already in hand. So, yeah, just need another a land or a ramp card. Do not have Clever Impersonator to copy Wolf of Haven, which would help here. All right, just a land, so we'll put Geruda in hand. And uh, play Time Breeding Pool. So two turns away still from casting Geruda, but we've got the lands for it. Opponent's not doing much in the meantime. And now I can Impersonate her, copy Haven. And pass it back. Four mana for Marwyn, still one mana left. So I guess her opponent's deck is all in on the Marwyn plan to untap it, make mana, and uh, basically combo off next turn. So hopefully we can combo off before they do. Because we could easily die next turn. And there we see some of the card draw effects. Kami can also help them make a lot of mana. So we get our shield counter on Geruda now. Another operative, keep it going. Plenty of protection spells in the opponent's deck as well. So yeah, this Marwyn's not going anywhere. And we already bricked. Not the best Geruda here. Now I can chump with Geruda, because it has a shield counter on it, so... We'll see if that's enough to survive. And then next turn I can cast Spark Double from hand, which will uh, help me go wide with Geruda. So this turn's probably going to take a second. Opponent casting all these pump spells that also untap, increasing Marwyn's power, so it makes more mana. And then they want to combine all that mana with a card draw effect, like uh, Rishkar's Expertise. And basically string that together until they, yeah, can win the game. No Trample on Marwyn, so not sure what their plan is if we have an indestructible blocker back. They're just gonna keep going off, 25 cards remaining, 20 mana available at the very least. Yeah, I don't think we've seen any trample effects. They kind of need to get a second creature involved. Expertise, keep drawing, 10 cards remaining, so if they cast another one of those they're dead. Bull strength, alright, that'll do it. Now they have trample, so now they just need to cast a few more pump spells. All right, so both decks got to go off, but our deck uh, kind of stopped in its tracks a little early. If we mill a couple more cards, then uh, they don't get to cast another Expertise, or they risk decking. So they still need to increase Marwyn's power a little bit. Currently taking 11 Trample damage. So play Marwyn just to get the counters. 
there are some X spells in there as well, like uh, so Tyvar's stand. So that would be an easy way to close it out, but we've milled a few already. So it's possible that they're unable to close it out right now. Imagine probably over half of these are lands. All right, they did have a Tyvar stand after all, so not sure why they were waiting. But uh, yeah, that'll do it. GG's. Block, take 30 damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn two Paradise Druids, turn three hopefully Haven and put Geruda in hand. And then uh, with an extra land, turn four cast Geruda. Opponent with a Mana Confluence to start out and commune with Spirits, so an enchantment deck presumably. Turn to Deathrite Shaman. Don't think that really messes with our plan too much. I suppose it could exile a creature that we try and get back with Juruda. But it doesn't target, so no, I don't think that really messes us up. I see Moret of the Frost, so is your opponent setting up the uh, combo here with Tyvar, potentially? Deathrite still makes a mana, so... Pretty interesting graveyard deck from our opponent so far. Alright, Drew Giruda. That can potentially help. As I can just go double Haven. Although, if we want to play around a discard spell, I could still put Giruda in hand, but then we're not playing around removal. So, what's more likely? I guess that answers that question. Put Giruda in hand. And then, if Paradise Druid survives, I'll go for Giruda next turn. Can be the Thought Seize. Opponent's just gonna drain us with Death right. And there's Tyvar. That's fine. So they can immediately activate Death Rite Shaman if they'd like. They milled Harald Unites the Elves, so yeah, opponent's playing a similar deck to the one we featured last time, but uh, definitely with their own twist. Death Rite, not a card I tried in the deck, but pretty good alongside Tyvar as well. They have a land so they can make mana. And a Fauna Shaman could also activate right away. Although I don't think they have any lands left to exile with Deathrite. And yeah, we get to now cast our Geruda and hopefully fully combo off. Because if we don't, and our opponent has a Harald Unites the Elves in hand, we're kind of doing them a favor. So start by getting our operative going. So now they could activate Death Rite, since we put a land in their graveyard. So that lets them activate Fauna Shaman. Archaeologist can also mill them, and yeah, we already fizzled out. It's too bad. I guess Scrap Gorger's graveyard hates, so that can help us disrupt the opponent's game plan. But they already had a Moritz in the graveyard, now two. So Fauna Shaman just needs to find a way to cast Harald Unites the Elves or get it back from the graveyard and that will be game over. So I imagine we're dead here. Fauna Shaman discards another Murit. With Deathrite they have 5 mana total. So Tragic Poet would do it. Visionary... I think it's gonna be a little bit short on mana. I guess they can untap Deathrite. Take my hand. But it looks like our opponent's going for it next turn. Alright, so we're definitely not getting another chance at this, so now it definitely needs to count. I guess Scrap Gorger is untapped now, so that could potentially interact by removing the uh, Harald Unites the Elves that they try and get back. Unless there's multiples, which I guess there's about to be. But uh, yeah, with two more clone effects we've got a good shot of just completely milling the opponent out. Can copy the non-legendary Geruda for what it's worth. And Thassa's Oracle, which let's see here. How much is my devotion? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Thassa's Oracle almost would have done it, which is pretty funny. 
You know what? What if I grab Thassa's Oracle and then play my next clone effect? Copying Geruda and then eventually copy Oracle again. We can just win with the opponent's win condition. So let's see. Put up to one card on top of our library. Sure, I guess Spark Double is fine. And then cast Operative. So we won't be able to use Scrap Gorger, and yeah, Operative, copy Geruda, keep going, and then at some point we'll have enough blue devotion to just win with a copied Thassa's Oracle, so we don't even need to fully combo off, just a couple more Gerudas will do it. So very unusual interaction here in Explore. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This is an easy mulligan. This I can try to keep. And then get rid of probably Spark Double. Operative better to copy Paradise Druid. Even though Spark Double is better to copy Giruda if we get to that point. Turn one Mystic. Okay. So turn two Paradise Druid. Turn three copy with Operative. Doesn't seem like our opponent's going to have much interaction. Just got to hope they're not faster than us landing Giruda on turn four, hopefully. Stomper. Okay, so they're ramping quite nicely. Next turn operative, and then yeah, we should have the mana to cast Geruda on the following turn, if Paradise Druid survives. Cavalier of Thorns, that's scary if they can find a Nykthos especially, so our opponent is indeed on a Devotion strategy. Not sure if Karn can get anything that will mess with our plan. Could also copy the opponent's Cavalier of Thorns, now that I think about it. Any merit to that? Uh, we would mill ourselves more, so... Decking could be a slight concern there, but no, let's just copy Cavalier of Thorns. And then we're pretty likely to hit a land. Alright, so yeah, copying the opponent's creatures also an option. And we even have a Vizier of Many Faces we can embalm. Although I don't think it's gonna come to that. Milling the opponent is also a downside if they have Storm the Festival, which uh, I assume most Green Devotion decks are running, so they would be able to flash that back. Without a Nykthos, they're a bit short on mana. And there's Karn, yep. Just a Dark Seal Citadel. Opponent wanted to hit our land drop for the turn. So disaster avoided. Our opponent doesn't know that we have a Giruda in hand, so they're maybe expecting us to go for it in two turns from now. But as it turns out, we can combo off right now. And yeah, there's Storm the Festival, as we talked about. Questing Beast, an option, but Cavalier can block it. Would still let us take out Karn, but yeah, let's just keep going. Hope to hit a Spark Double at some point. Oof, we already bricked, and now we don't get anything except for a Scram Gorger. At least Giruda has a shield counter, and I have a Spark Double in hand, so if we can untap with Giruda, I can Spark Double and then actually start going wide with Giruda's. But uh, yeah, this is not where we want to find ourselves. Scram Gorger could Exile Storm the Festival next turn. If they don't flash it back right now, opponent has 5, 6, 7, 8 mana. So, without Nykthos, they wouldn't be able to cast it. Opponent getting a God Pharaoh statue. Not a huge problem. Can still cast a 6 mana Spark Double. So, looks like we're in the clear. Yeah, let's just... Uh, Exile that storm the festival. Play spark double. And copy Giruda. Another spark double. Although at this point we can just copy the non legendary one. So we're good to go. Might as well get the shield counter. So 20-something cards left. Go for the clone over Giruda, so we get to keep it in play. Multiple Storm the Festivals. 
So 12 versus 11 cards. Yeah, let's keep going. Should be able to win with damage. Although, could maybe win by milling instead. So 4 versus 3, and there's one more Spark Double. That should seal the deal. Opponent untaps. We could even copy something else here. And there we have it. Awesome, satisfying win against Monogreen Devotion, which, yeah, is still one of the best decks in the format. So, our deck is capable of winning. It's pretty janky, not the most consistent deck out there, and our game plan can be disrupted in a multitude of ways, all the way from a Thoughtseize taking away Jeruda after we put it in our hand. A counter spell is usually a lights out. Even instant speed removal in response to the Jeruda trigger can prevent us from comboing, as we may not have a Jeruda left to copy. So again, there's no shortage of answers. Our deck is also not the fastest out there, so other combo decks can usually combo off before we do. And then once we do finally manage to put a Jeruda on the stack, there's still a luck factor involved if we don't manage to string together multiple clone effects. So your mileage may vary, but it's still a very funny deck to see in action, so if you happen to have all these clone effects on Arena, why not give it a shot? But I would never recommend this as a competitive choice for the ranked ladder. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.